Hello everyone and welcome to my presentation. My name is Melanie Feist and I am a PhD student at the University of Mannheim. Today I will introduce you to a comprehensive approach of an adaptive middleware framework which is designed for the needs of mixed critical cyberphysical networks. Let's dive right in. Um, we will start with a brief introduction to the field of mixed critical cyberphysical networks and the motivation for this work. In general, a cyberphysical system consists of a cyber system and sensors and actuators as the connection between the cyber world and the physical world. Often, multiple cyberphysical systems cooperate and interact with each other over a network to fulfill their task and achieve their goals. This leads us to the topic of cyberphysical networks. Additionally, tasks with different criticality level exist in such cyberphysical networks, which makes them mixed critical. Such mixed critical cyberphysical networks are used in popular application fields like autonomous driving, traffic management, or even remote patient monitoring or smart home environments. All those fields have in common that the mixed critical cyberphysical network is deployed in dynamic and unpredictable environments while interacting and cooperating over a network. Also, safety critical tasks require an hard real time behavior, and non safety critical tasks, where best effort is sufficient, compete for the given resources. This leads us to the conclusion that in such mixed critical cyberphysical networks, non functional requirements, especially timing constraints like deadlines, need to be enforced in dynamically changing operating conditions to ensure safety. For example, to be able to ensure the safety of the occupant of a vehicle in the application field of autonomous driving or traffic management. The management of cyberphysical networks is already very complex due to the ever increasing number of cooperating systems. The dynamics and mixed criticality magnify this even more. As a result, the design and management of such mixed critical cyberphysical networks is a complex task, and the question arises how a mixed critical cyberphysical network can efficiently handle safety related non functional requirements in dynamic operating conditions with regard to the mixed criticality aspect by making use of the available resources without dragging the application developers into this system complexity. Our solution here is a comprehensive approach to handle the complexity of mixed critical cyberphysical networks autonomously at runtime. Therefore, we strive to provide adaptation and distribution transparency by using autonomic computing mechanisms and encapsulation of the whole management and adaptation capabilities into a middleware framework. This middleware framework we named Chameleon. These boxes here are the agenda of the reminder of the presentation. There are various aspects and concepts that I would like to introduce to you. First, we will start with the concepts that consider adaptation and mixed criticality before moving on to the basic architecture of the middleware. Let's start with the first aspect, the multi-dimensional optimization space. What has the system model to do with the multi-dimensional optimization space? Well, we follow a comprehensive approach. Therefore, we consider the key parameters and the structure of the entire system consisting of application, computing nodes, communication channels, sensors, actuators, and the middleware itself as subject of adaptation. The system model describes the world in which the developed middleware operates. Therefore, due to the chosen comprehensive approach and the required end-to-end -end view, all the resources of a mixed critical cyberphysical network are modeled, including their key parameters and the interaction with each other. The comprehensive approach uh, allows for a maximum of flexibility for adaptation mechanisms and increases the opportunities for adaptation by considering multiple aspects like relocation, modification of scheduling strategies, and 
tuning of timing constraints as possible actions to ensure safety. This creates the multidimensional optimization space. The next aspect I want to talk to you about is the criticality modeling and the management of the mixed criticality in such a mixed critical cyberphysical network. The criticality of a task becomes of interest if it is not possible to serve all task requirements anymore. In such overload situations, the criticality of a task needs to be considered to decide which task can be scaled down first. An example of the automotive error might be that a, car, a crash avoidance system in a car might trigger the camera sensors to emit messages more often and thus creating an overload situation. To be able to avoid an accident, the safety critic the safety critical task, which is responsible for the brake control, must continue to comply with all requirements. On the other hand, it is acceptable if the task responsible for the multimedia system violates its requirements to ensure the safety of the vehicle occupants. For a human or an application designer, it is clear which tasks um, are critical and therefore important to be executed timely and which are not. This information needs to be communicated to the middleware, which is responsible for the resource management. In case of a system overload, the sound execution of a high critical task should be prioritized by the middleware. We have chosen a flexible classification into different importance levels. Thereby, the importance parameter is used as a decision parameter for adaptation and management choices in case of overload situation. This realizes a dynamically prioritization of critical tasks in terms of adaptation and maintenance. The last aspect regarding the adaptation I want to talk about are the so-called health values. When we think again of the comprehensive approach and the system model, it is clear that we have a multitude of specific monitoring data we can observe. We can, for example, monitor statistics like miss rates and average distances to given timing constraints, for example, deadlines or periods of applications, or also some status data like the demands of applications or the remaining capacities of nodes or communication channels might be interesting. Even remaining energy of a node might be of interest dependent on the application field. The question is now, how do we decide if an adaptation is necessary to ensure safety and when this is the case, which action is best? For, for example, should we trigger adaptation when a deadline is missed the first time? Or is it sometimes acceptable that a deadline is missed? And when adaptation is necessary to keep this deadline, for example, how should we achieve this? Should we tune a period of another application? Or should we relocate an application within the system? There are many questions and possibility which needs to be considered here. As basis for the adaptation of the system, we therefore added an abstraction layer in terms of normalized health values to describe a unified definition of the system condition. Thereby, any specific monitoring data can be mapped to abstract and normalized health values. The condition of a component in the whole system can then be expressed by multiple of such health values. For example, we can derive a health value per application, per node and per local communication channel within the system. And the overall system health is then, for example, the worst or average of those health values. Based on this normalized health values and acceptance space, which describes the acceptable behavior of the system is achieved. Also, we can define a target space, which is a subset of the acceptance space. Adaptation can then be triggered if a defined acceptance space or target space is left. This makes the system robust. When using the target space limit for adaptation, proactive behavior, which avoids unacceptable behavior can be achieved as well. In addition, the system is flexible since the adaptation goal can be altered by adapting the limits or the derivation of the health values.
On this slide, an example calculation on how health values of application can be retrieved is shown. In this example, we simply use the miss rates and average distances to define timing constraints of application provided from the system monitoring. Also, we assume that each application can define maximal allowed miss rates and allowed maximal relative distances as margins of the acceptance space. Based on this assumption, we can derive health values which describe the application condition. This condition can then be used to determine if adaptation becomes necessary or not. The health values describing the condition of the components as well as the overall system can then be used by an adaptation mechanism, for example rules, to determine if adaptation is necessary and if this is the case, which adaptation action might be useful to bring the system back in the desired behavior in the desired limits of the acceptance or target space to ensure safety. This slide here shows some considerations. Due to timing constraints, I only give a brief example. If the local application health in combination with the local node health are lower than the defined limit of the acceptance or target space, but the communication health is still fine, a node overload might be the source of the problem of the unhealthy application and unhealthy node on which the application runs. Thus, the location of the application might be a good adaptation action to bring back the system in the defined acceptance or target space since the communication to this point is still fine. The last part of today's presentation deals with the basic architecture of the developed middleware framework. Thereby, I will go through some components of the middleware which are required to provide the transparencies. I also want to mention that this architecture is already realized and implemented in an Omnet++ simulation environment. First of all, some interfaces to other resources of the mixed critical cyber physical network are required. They provide access to the defined parameters of applications, communication channels, and sensors and actuators. Since this is an adaptive middleware, we also need an adaptive component. In this case, we use the common MAPK blueprint. Um, it monitors the behavior and adapts the parameters and structure of the system via the other middleware components. One of those other components is the load handler. It handles the load management of applications on the middleware. It allows to monitor and modify the computational and communication load caused by application and sensors on the local node and on the communication channels of the middleware. Therefore, it offers adaptation actions like modification of scheduling strategies, relocation, and tuning of application constraints to the MAPK loop. The request handler is responsible for the management of messages between the application and the communication side. Thereby, a differentiation between local messages and remote or gateway messages which needs to be sent over the network is made. If a message needs to be sent over the network to reach its destination, the middleware instance needs to know where the destination application is currently located. So it needs to know on which node or middleware instance the application resides. And also the middleware needs to know how to reach them, so which local communication channel to use to transmit the message to the corresponding um, application. This is also true for sensors and actuators. This knowledge can be retrieved from the local map component. It establishes an overlay network. Additionally, to the path information, also retrieved remote monitoring data is stored within this component. This is necessary since due to the end-to-end -end nature of the safety-related non-functional requirements, a global view is required to decide if adaptation is necessary to keep the system safe. We have reached the conclusion. In this talk, I have introduced some concepts and the basic architecture of Chameleon a comprehensive mixed criticality supporting adaptive middleware for cyber physical networks. We started the journey with the multidimensional optimization space, which allow for a maximum of flexibility of adaptation mechanisms. 
Next, we talked about criticality modeling and management of mixed criticality to ensure that the most important safety functions are maintained even in overload situations. Afterwards, the concept of health values as basis for adaptation decision were introduced. Finally, the basic components to provide transparency were introduced. Since we strive to develop and evaluate learning adaptation mechanisms that enable and optimize the execution of applications according to their safety-related non-functional requirements, with respect to their criticality, the next step is the realization and implementation of the MAPE-K loop with a distributed learning classifier approach. Afterwards, we of course want to evaluate the overall concept and architecture in different application scenarios in an Omnet++ simulation environment. We have reached the end of my presentation. Thank you for your attention.